Hello everyone and welcome to the Guna Factory. So today we will be looking ahead to our Champions League fixture against Lons. Arsenal in the Champions League. Who doesn't love these nights? Let's get into it. So this Wednesday we play the return fixture of the group stage game against Lons. And I just seriously hope that our performance improves massively from the first game after we lost 2-1 in France. But I do expect a better performance this time. I mean Lons, they're not a bad side. They came second in the French League last year finishing only one point behind the winners and champions PSG. And look, they're doing okay this year. They're currently in sixth position. They're unbeaten in the league, though, for now over two months. And their last league game, they won 3-0. So they come into this game in decent form. And in terms of how I expect Lons to play, I think sort of against most of the top sides they've played this season, they, they seem to be happy enough or at least expecting um, the fact that they won't have as much possession of the ball. And from what I can see, they like to play a back five. So they are very player heavy in and around the box when they are the defending team. So I'm expecting the type of game where Arsenal have 65% possession or more maybe. So we are going to need to be very decisive with our decision making in the final third we are going to need to be creative in terms of on the ball but off the ball as well because on the ball we need players who are capable of beating a man either getting a shot away or you know playing in someone else but we're also going to need players who have that ability like when they don't have the ball they're able to still have an impact on the game they need to be able to drag players out sort of creating runs and that will just allow gaps to appear for someone else to take advantage of so in terms of starting 11 it's always difficult to predict a Mikel Arteta 11 as he might do something like he did on the weekend and go with a team that he's never picked before but we will try and guess anyway. So in goal, we'd probably have to say he'll revert back to the keeper. He has seemingly decided will be the new number one now, and that is David Raya, whose stock I think right now is probably increasing daily with the Arsenal fans. At first, we didn't like it, but the more he plays, the more I see what Arteta is trying to do. And I guess the more Ramsdale plays, to be fair, the more faith I put in Raya, because Ramsdale, although he's a great keeper, he looks dodgy. And Raya did look dodgy at first, but now he sort of seems to be playing in a way that is starting to inspire confidence. So Raya in goal, Tomiyasu right back. I thought he had a great game on the weekend against Brentford. We know Ben White has a slight muscle pain, so there's still no need to, to rush Ben back, especially with Tomiyasu being one of the better players on the weekend. Gabriel and Saliba centre-backs, although he may opt to rest one of them and bring in Kiwior. Uh, he sometimes does that in cup games. I think the last time out, he rested Gabriel and brought in Kiwior, so maybe... He has a similar thought process this time around. Then Zinchenko left back. Again, one of the better players on the weekend. Plenty of the ball, plenty of creativity. And I would say Zinchenko has definitely earned his start. So onto the midfield, Declan Rice, in many people's opinion, man of the match on the weekend. And actually, from a poll I saw yesterday, he's actually a lot of people's vote for player of the season so far. So that just goes to show how quickly Declan Rice has settled in up in North London. And then to complete the midfield three, he opted for Trossard in the last game, but my guess would be he goes for Havertz. You know, after the big German scored the winner on the weekend, I'm sure Arteta would be looking for the now midfielder to continue not just this goal scoring streak, but he's, he's probably hoping that the last performance allows Havertz to, to kick up that extra gear and show just why Arteta bought him in. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna say a midfield three of Declan Rice, Havertz and Odegaard. And I think it will be Saka, Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus as a front three. And look, here's a tip here. If I was a betting man, I would be putting money on Gabriel Jesus to score. This guy loves the Champions League. He loves the big nights. He's playing well in the Champions League this season already with three goals in three games. So I just hope that streak continues. And to be honest, I hope this is the game where Arsenal actually finally click into gear. Because I don't know about you lot, but I just... I haven't seen the same type of performances that we got so used to last season. There's, there seems to be something missing slightly. I believe Arsenal still have another gear to go up. And that's actually pretty impressive when you look at how things stand in the Premier League. Because after 13 games, Arsenal are sitting in first place. So I'm hoping this type of game, you know, Champions League at home, can be the catalyst and really push Arsenal on. Because if we can stay top till... I don't know, say January, then bring in some reinforcements to help strengthen and just add that extra depth. I give Arsenal a massive chance this season, probably more than last season, because I think with the players we acquired in the summer, we are better equipped for a sustained title fight. But at the minute, as I said, top of the Premier League, top of our Champions League group with four points more than the second place PSV. And people are still saying Arsenal have fell off. And Arsenal fans are still saying we haven't clicked into gear yet. So imagine when we click into gear, it's going to be scary. 
but not for us. So in this next section, I just wanted to say a quick word on Mikel Arteta because the match against Brentford was his 200th game in charge of Arsenal. So this is obviously a massive milestone. So I just wanted to show some respect and gratitude and sort of just give it a mention in this video because his record is actually inc incredible because after 200 games, he has actually won more times than any other Arsenal manager in history. This is a massive achievement and one that's maybe... I don't know, slightly gone under the radar. Because for comparison, Arsene Wenger, after 200 games, had 111 wins. Mikel Arteta has 116. So even though the margin there is close, he's still ahead of certainly the greatest Arsenal manager of my lifetime. So we can only hope that Mikel goes on to be as successful as Wenger was, especially in them early years when he was battling for the title every year and, and winning it often. The only thing I hope Mikel Arteta can do different is actually guiding the team all the way in the Champions League, which is something that evaded the French legend. But I'd love to know everyone's thoughts on all the things you've heard in this video. Are you expecting an easy win against Lons or are you, like the last game, expecting it to be a bit difficult? And what are your thoughts on Mikel Arteta's team, philosophy and managerial ship after 200 games in charge? Thanks to everyone for watching and listening. Like always, I do appreciate it. And if you could help me out by just liking the video and subscribing to the channel, it helps me out massively. And I will speak to you all in tomorrow's video. And until then, Gooners, have a good day.